Hi everyone, in today's tactics video I'm going to check out the Astra Militarum Combat Patrol Box and assess how competitive it is in the current meta. Clearly aimed at the beginner, this box set provides great value uh, from a money point of view and a nice way to get into the 10th edition of Warmer 40,000. To provide wider context, I'll compare the Astra Militarum set to two other army sets at differing levels of the competitive landscape. So quickly going over the combat patrol system firstly. Uh, first, it is purpose design uh, with sets that allow you to battle against someone else with another combat uh, patrol set. They've got their own mission pack with six missions being available, all for free from the Warhammer community website. And each combat patrol um, then has army specific rules, which differ to the rules you'll find in the wider army indexes. In theory, these combat patrol sets uh, should provide a balanced game with GW modifying the rules in each combat patrol to either tune up or tune down relevant units. Finally, a key point on the game itself is that combat patrol missions are played on a smaller 44 by 30 inch board, with the key point I'll make here being that any melee focused armies will naturally be in combat much quicker than if played on a full sized 44 by 60 tabletop. I say this as Astra Militarum have and still are very, very vulnerable in the fight phase. Right, so with that all in mind, let's now check out the details of the Astra Militarum Combat Patrol box. With a retail price of £95, it's a huge saving of 36% if you were to buy all the units individually. The army list you use will employ all the units included in the box, which includes a command squad, two caddy and shock troop squads, a field and ordnance battery, and an armoured sentinel. Adding all their points together, their collective value is 385 points, so just shy of the 400 points that is the rough value that the combat patrol boxes are aimed at. What I've also added um, is the current average win rate as provided by 40kstats.com. This is a great website that collects the win losses uh, from around the world for all of the larger game formats including 1000, 2000 and 3000 points. As you'll see, Ashton and Tarm are sitting at a very poor 37% win rate, which is important to factor when looking at the common patrol rules in a moment. Now, the two other armies I'm comparing are the World Eaters and Adeptus Custodes. I've chosen these as the World Eaters are mid pack from a meta point of view, and Custodes are currently one of the top performing armies. For World Eaters, the value saving is similar, whilst the list uh, being used employs all units as well, and you're sitting at a collective point value of 425 points. You can see their average win rate is respectable 48%. Now the Custodes have got a similar cash saving value, uh, whilst interestingly you don't employ all the provided units, either choosing the jet bikes or the four Custodian Guard models. At 400 points on the nose, Custodes are currently enjoying a very powerful 58% win rate. Do remember that the win rate alludes to the larger game formats and doesn't include combat patrol games. So from this you can see that the combat patrol box sets represent fantastic value for money, with the Astra Militarum set having the lowest points value across the three that we're checking out. Now let's turn to detachment rules aka abilities. On the left hand side you will see what the combat patrol has versus what it has in the full rule system in the army index. Ash Militarum has the voice of command order system with the platoon commander able to choose three orders as opposed to six um, orders available in the larger uh, games. Loosely speaking these three orders for the combat patrol uh, are fine however I don't see the reason why we can't use all six. Orders are a key way uh, to making Ash Militarum work However, as we look at the World Eaters, you can see that they too are only able to access three of the six Blessings of Corn, whilst the Custodes can only access two of their three Martial Katars. This suggests to me that GW is simply trying to reduce the uh, amount of rules being used in the Comp Patrol games to make it a simpler, easier experience for those new players. So with that all in mind, I'd say that across the three armies, um, all have been detuned for their army rules. Right next is the enhancements, previously known as Warlord Traits. For Ashton Militarum, the platoon commander in the command squad can take either Command Laurels or Gunnery Officer. Now comparing these to those found in the Index, I broadly say the two available for the Comp Patrol are actually quite good, if not better. 
Command Laurels allows an order to affect all units and it's very, very good at boosting all movement by three inches via move, move, move. Improving Blistered Skill by uh, uh, Take Aim. Or improving or Armor Saves via Take Cover. The second one, Gunnery uh, Officer, improves your uh, Field Ordnance Batteries, which is decent, but isn't as strong as Command Laurels, which boosts all units. By comparison, the enhancements available to World Eaters and Custodies aren't as good as those in their wider indexes. So I'd say from an enhancements point of view, Ash Mill Time actually have been boosted. All right, now to stratagems. A similar theme is that we've got just three army specific ones versus six available in the wider index. The three we have are Send in the Next Wave, which were for one CP, allows you to bring back a destroyed unit and deploy it anywhere in the tabletop, as long as they're nine inches near a table edge and not within engagement range of an enemy unit. This is seriously good and should be used all the time. And it's actually a better version of the reinforcement stratagem in the index, which cost you two CP and has got significant conditions on when the new unit is deployed and which units can actually use a stratagem. Next, bring it down is also great, allowing all Ashmill time units that target a chosen enemy unit to re-roll the hit roll. There's nothing like this in the index, um, and at 1 CP, this is very, very good, driving efficiencies when partnered with Take Aim, ensuring all your shots are getting on target. Lastly, Artillery Strike costs you two command points and can only be used once per battle. For one per, uh, turn, this halves your opponent's move, advance, and they can't charge and all their range attacks suffer a minus one to hit. A key point here is that this affects all of their units, and this is very, very powerful, and could cripple any opponent eager to get onto an objective or into melee, giving us more time to plink away with our ranged weapons to degrade their uh, units. Now as comparison, the three stratagems available to World Eaters and Custodies overall aren't as good as those available in their indexes. The Custodies in particular have got some very powerful ones in their index, with those in the Common Patrol being good but not as strong. So I'd say there that Ash Mill Time have been boosted by the available stratagems whilst our World Eaters and Custodies have been detuned. Okay, now onto data sheets. Here, all the core rules like movement, toughness, armor save, and weapon profiles, uh, etc., are the same across Common Patrols and the Index, with the inclusion or exclusion of a unit's abilities on the right hand side of the data sheet being the difference. With this, this in mind, the Command Squad and Caddy and Shop Troops are missing abilities in the Combat Patrol. Firstly, the Command Squad lacks two rules, uh, with the first being Caddy Stands, which ignores all modifiers, and also Master Vox, which allows orders to be given to units 24 inches away. Overall, I'd say the loss of Caddy Stands isn't too bad, and nor is Master Vox, given the Enhancement Command Laurels uh, shown earlier allows all units to be affected by uh, an order, which basically achieves the same thing. Next, the Cadian Shock Troops don't have the Shock Troop rule, which allows them to hold an objective they previously did but moved off, and likewise the Voxcaster allowing CP recovery. Overall, these aren't massive losses, and the CP regeneration is covered via the Enhancement uh, Command Laurels, which also gives you one extra command point per turn. Our other two units of the Field Ordnance Battery and the Armored Sentinels uh, have got both of their additional abilities, boosting the Field Ordnance uh, raw damage output and improving the accuracy of the Sentinel when targeting a monster or vehicle. Again, as comparison, the World Eaters lose all abilities on all units and the Custodies lose the majority of their abilities on um, all of their custody style units, except for the Sisters of Silence being the Prosecutors and Vigilators. This is pretty telling of the raw power of the World Eater and Adeptus Custodes data sheets. And both of these armies are very powerful in the fight phase, getting out a lot of attacks. And in a game where the board is very small, as mentioned earlier, they would do very, very good work. So having no ability certainly is a way of keeping things a bit more balanced. So from a data sheet point of view, I said that Ashton Miller Time is actually in a better position than World Eaters and Custodes. Okay, very finally, let's look at the two available army-specific secondary objectives. Of note, the larger game formats don't yet have army-specific secondary objectives. Have a look at both of these that look quite achievable. Hold the line rewards points for having no enemy units in your deployment zone, which will score strong um, early on, depending on opponent's list. Whilst methodical destruction rewards VP for destroying an, a chosen enemy unit. 
The second one will of course depend on your opponent's list, but since we've got the strategy and bring it down, this should be somewhat achievable. As comparison, the World Eaters and Custody secondary objectives are nowhere near as easy to achieve, with some probably only being scored later in the game, whilst ours hold the line uh, can be scored all game. So from that, I'd say that Ashton Miller Time have the stronger of the secondary objectives, being able to reliably score them all game. So in summary, across the three armies we're looking at, Ashton Miller Time probably is stronger overall on account for the enhancements, stratagems, unit abilities on the data sheets and the secondary objectives. The total point cost of 385 points versus the other armies is a small negative, whilst the voice of command army ability being more restrictive is in line with the other armies. So this broadly feels very positive, however it doesn't mean that we're going to be crushing it in combat patrol sized games. As you know, a single guardsman is a flimsy toughness 3 1 wound 5 plus save model, which disintegrates against anything serious, and given a big chunk of this combat patrol is infantry, it's a relatively flimsy force. I say to effectively use this force, you need to be getting out as many turns of shooting from your field ordnance batteries, and the armoured sentinels are to be used as a meat shield. Against melee focused forces like custodies and world eaters, make sure you have the two CP ready to use the artillery strike stratagem. Its timing is crucial to allowing you to pile on more shots before they hit your lines in melee. Likewise, make sure you are constantly using send in the next wave stratagem, as in theory you've got an additional five units if you were to lose one unit per every battle round. To secure forward objectives, take advantage of the command squad, with the regimental standard increasing your objective control value by one. So your Cadian shock troops have got a value of three OC per model, which could be very effective. As said, this force is very, very flimsy, offset by some good stratagems and achievable secondary objectives. Also be very realistic as to how much damage output this army will do, as strength three AP zero LAS guns have got a habit of doing absolutely nothing. Um, and going up against aggressive opponents, this army will disappear. Whilst probably generic advice, make sure to focus on scoring the primary objective, carefully using your multiple bodies to hold and contest objectives. This force will lose the shootout or the fistfight against most other armies, so truly focusing on the mission is probably the main way to victory. So very, very finally, how competitive is the Ashton Miller Time Combat Patrol Box? I'd probably say mid-tier, with the Custodes and World Eaters been marginally ahead. Looking at these three Combat Patrol Boxes in isolation actually feels quite balanced on, a f on account for the elements I explored earlier. This is interesting as the average win rates I looked at earlier indicate otherwise. As said earlier, 40kstats.com takes the larger game sizes, such as 1000 points and 2000 points, which is obviously very, very different to Combat Patrol games, and Ashton Miller Time in these larger games is finding it very tough at the moment. So what do you think of the Ashton Miller Time Combat Patrol Box, and what's been your experience playing these smaller missions? Let me know in the comments. Am I right in my assessment as to how competitive this set is? Let me know. So if you enjoyed this and want to support me, you can do so with a like, comment, or by subscribing, uh, joining my Patreon platoon, or simply watching any of my other YouTube videos. To keep your bayonet sharp, last gun oiled. Faith from the Emperor Strong, Patreon platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn. Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten. Tank Commander Mitchell. Colour Sergeant DuPont. Sergeants Adal, the Colonel Merrill. Veteran Gibson, Hall, Lundeen, Guardsman Beard, Coquelin, Flint, Hills, Malik, Nitin, Nguyen, Smith, Tom, Tomkin, Conscripts England, Gilliam, Goodwin.